Hey, it's Ashley from adlimmings.com and today we're going to do a tutorial on Canva on using text. Now we're going to just jump into the basics of text here, I'm not going to go into the full details, but what I wanted to do is show you how to use text in Canva and how to play around with it, get the optimal effect out of text and how to do the basics. So I'm just going to show you a Pinterest design here. It's quite easy to start using some of these designs, they already have a lot of text in them. So if we take this one as an example, five ways, you can see there's already quite a lot of text on here. Now we have the background image behind it and a couple of other elements like lines and a picture and a circle here. I'm not going to go into those in this tutorial. If you want to have a look at uh, images, I've already done a tutorial on that and how to change background images and so forth. But here we're going to focus on text. So in order to start playing with the text, you need to click on the element itself. And I've just clicked on the five ways text here, anywhere on the text, and you can see a dotted line box comes up. So if I click anywhere on that or around that, it should highlight it for us. So I'll just click away to show you again, and it highlights it for us. Now the first thing you'll notice is that at the top you have a panel, which gives you a lot of options for this piece of text. And we'll just run through those one by one. The first one is the fonts. Now you have a whole bunch of fonts here available from bold to thin to Helvetica style fonts and uh, script handwriting style fonts and so on and you can choose the one that suits you. Of course this uh, template comes with one that they think looks good so you can stick with that as well or you can change it as much as you want and you just have to click on the one that you choose and it'll automatically apply that. As you can see now it's changed. So I can go in again, change that again and the thing you have to keep in mind is some of these fonts are thinner than others and some are wider than others. So when you do change them, it could be that the font goes outside of the box that you have here. So you can see now that's happened already. The font has jumped onto a second line and that is because the box is constraining it and it said, okay, within that box I can't fit. So I'm gonna make a new line and go onto the new line. So if you want it all on one line, you should grab this white ball on the right hand side and move that to the right until the text moves up to the line. And if we move that line back again to the left, the dotted line, as it approaches the S you'll see that it'll suddenly jump to a new line. So that's the border of which this text fits in this box. So when you change fonts you need to be aware of that. You might need to resize the box to fit the text. Now the box doesn't have to be exactly the width of the text, that's just the smallest amount of width you need in order to contain this text. You can of course go wider, but what's really good is if you have it almost exactly as wide as the text, then you'll know exactly how big that piece of text is when you're moving it around on the page. So if I wanted to move this around, the box is showing me pretty much how big this piece of text is. So that's it for the fonts. You can also change the size of the font, of course, just like in a Word document or anything else, you can make that smaller or bigger. So if you didn't want to make the box bigger like I just did and you wanted it to fit within that box, you can of course change the font size as well. They have a bunch of preset font sizes in here. And again, these are fairly standard font uh, numbers that you'll see in a lot of programs. And you can also type in here an exact number if you've got a box that you want it to fit into and 56 is too big you can start typing 50 is too small and then 52 for example i'm on 55 at the moment until you get the exact number that fits the area that you want to fit into so you, you can choose these numbers but you can also go between them by typing in this white box so let's go back up to what we had before which was something like 88 i think and the other thing you can change is the color. So you can go in here and they've got a couple of preset colors which they've thought works well with this image and this layout. So you can choose those ones, red, blue, green. And you'll notice that each template has a bunch of presets in it and it's normally about four or five and this one has seven. Now if you don't like those, what you can do is choose one that's approximately correct or not even, it doesn't really matter, but that's a good starting point and then click this plus button here and that gives you a color wheel and it'll start on the color you've already chosen. Now if that's white it'll be in the middle and then you can start moving the wheel around and you can see my text is changing now so I get a good idea of how it looks. So I can say okay I want a greeny yellow color and a little bit lighter. So 
I'm happy with the color, but I want it to be a bit less dark or a bit more dark. You can use this uh, slider down here to get it darker or lighter as well. Or you can just plug in the exact hex code if you know what that is. If you work with HTML and so forth, then you might know a little bit about hex codes. That's part of the web standards. And if you know what that is, and you can pull that also from Photoshop or Illustrator and programs like that, and you can plug that in here as well. So that's pretty much how you play around with all the different colors. You can just move the wheel anywhere. So that's a color. Let's go with that color now. It's not a color I like, but let's stick with it. What you can also do with this little arrow on the right hand side here is you can play also with the transparency, which is down here towards the bottom. And you can make this a little bit see through, as you can see. That may or may not suit what you're trying to do. I typically don't do that. But if it's something you need to or want to do, you can play with that here. And that also affects the color, more or less. So that's why I wanted to show you that in relation to color. Now, if you want to delete the text, you can click the rubbish bin here, or the garbage bin, as you guys say in the States. And that's then gone. And if I click Control Z, which is a standard undo, it brings it back again. Of course, it doesn't matter if you do that. You can also get text from the uh, text menu on the left hand side of Canva. You can get standard text elements. And I'll show you that in a second. But let's play around with this call to action text down here. And one thing I wanted to show you, which is really a good thing to do or a best practice, I would call it, is to make sure that your text box spans the whole picture here if you want to center something. So if you look in this uh, drop down menu here, you have three options here of left, center and right. And they've made them left, centered and right to highlight the fact. Now, if I use center, which is already chosen here and my text block is not centered, you'll notice the text itself is actually centered within this dotted line box, but it's not centered within the picture. So what I do to get around that is I make sure the box is as big as the picture and then I get it centered and you'll see a dotted line appearing here also showing that we've actually got that exactly the size of the elements. That's quite helpful. And again, you can grab this box and move it around wherever you want it. But if you want to keep it exactly centered, which that dotted line shows us, then that's perfect. Now, if you're doing left align, of course, you may also want that centered, but then it doesn't really matter because left align is left aligned. And then it doesn't really matter if this box is centered. As you can see, I can change the size of the box and nothing really happens. Except, of course, if I hit the N, then it goes on to the next line, which we went over before. So that's the left, right and center align, just like you would in a Word document or something. And the other thing you will notice is that this text compared to the last one I was playing with is straight. Now that's a standard way a piece of text will appear in Canva if you add it. And if you want to rotate it, you use this little circle thing here and you can spin it around and then line it up with that line that we've got below it. So you can have text at an angle and you can make that any angle you want and just let go of your mouse. So basically you hold your mouse button down on that circle and start moving it around. And I would say keep your mouse away from the text and then move it in a circle. Because if you move it towards the center of the text, it's very hard to, to move it around. So move it a bit away and then spin it around. So that's how you rotate the text. Now back to this menu again, we've done the font, the size and the color and the other options in this thing here are bold or not bold. And as you can see, some fonts that they've got there look very different when they're bold. If I uncheck this, the other thing you can do is also make a list out of it, which basically puts a uh, bullet point there. Just if you're making a bullet point list on some kind of uh, poster you're making. So we've done left, center and align. You can also do copy and make a copy of that text, which is really great if you like the angle that it's on or the font you've got and you just want to make another copy and move it around. You can do that and then you can put your new text in there. Now to change the actual text, you just click in the box and then you can start typing. If you want to get rid of all the text, I do control, uh, control A or command A if you're using a Mac, which highlights it all, which is why it's A. And then you can use delete and get rid of it and start typing. Some fonts will be automatically capitalized if it's a capital font, but this railway font we have is not. 
if I move to a capitalized font, and we'll see if we can find one in here. Poor Creepster is one. That's all then capitalized. So it doesn't matter if you're small or large, but most fonts have normal big and small fonts available. So that was the copy function. You can also make a link out of the text, which depends where you're using it. And then you have the move back and forward. Now what that, that's about is that each element that you create has a hierarchy. So this one is above the one I'm moving it on top of. And as you can see, it appears on top of it. If I want to move it behind for some reason, for example, behind a picture or on top of a picture, then you can move these back and forward elements. And if I move behind, and now it's in between, so you can move it up and down. I keep moving it back. And as you can see now, it's behind that element. Or is it? Yes. So when I click on it, it's gone too far behind now, so we have to move this one back. And it's actually gone behind the picture. So we've actually lost it. We've moved it too far back because each element has an order, usually depending on the order in which it was added. And so if you keep, keep clicking back, 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 or forward, 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 you will lose things. And we'll probably find if we grab the picture here, you see the text is behind the picture. So be careful with that, but sometimes you may need to move things. So if I now click forward, or actually we're going to have to push this picture back. And there you go, it's now gone back. So it's a little bit tricky playing with those things, but that's the last thing you can do. If you lose an element, it might be due to where it is in the stack of elements. It's basically a stack starting from outside the screen to inside the screen. And that's pretty much it for text elements. If you want to add another one, you can go into this text panel on the left. And on the top here, you have your standard text elements from headings to subtitles to pieces of text. And that's basically they're just starting you with a larger piece of text or a smaller piece of text. And below here we have other text elements which I'll go in the next tutorial and show you how to use because they're a little bit more tricky to play with. And we'll get into that a bit deeper. Thanks for listening.